in this case, it's really rather elegantly done. It gives, it gives the, it doesn't cling to v very, very dark chapters of human histories, yet it doesn't deny that terrible things have happened. So it gives the, the, the Tarzan story uh, a firm anchor in something that you wouldn't really expect in uh, an adventure story of that kind. I've never seen anything like it. It's, it's, to me, it's, of course it's not unreal because I can go and touch it, but um, the idea to have a movie set this vast and the buildings that extreme, you know, gorges with waterfalls, rivers, jungles, cities, it is almost unfathomable. He knows how to handle that. I can do what I do because he handles that. I don't need to worry about all of that because I can go to David and say, don't you think I should rather, you know, blink my right eye instead of my left? And he's like, yeah, you know, I don't need to take care of. <laughs> he does that. <laughs> and, and, you know, well, yes, he has experience, but he knows what he's doing. And he feels what the story should be and how the course of events should develop. To put, to put all of this insane effort into the perfect use. And the perfect use might be very small. That's the aspect that interests me about Tarzan. Because the fact that he grew up with apes and has big hands and huge calluses and he can, you know, uh, choke a crocodile, that's pretty nice uh, and very admirable uh, for about 10 minutes. And, and then what you do the rest of the duration. The fact that he needs to cope with actually not being a hundred percent at home in either world is interesting because again it's a conflict it's how does he how does an ape uh, cope with the house of lords how does a lord cope with uh, a tribe of apes that's that's good <laughs> <laughs>